We just add myself to the stream there we go so welcome back to another episode of mccall media tv live whereby in today's broadcast i'm gonna literally on the fly show you how to create a little porthole so i'm just gonna quickly flick to my other screen to show you what it is we're talking about so here i am down in the i can't even do this there we go down in the right hand corner and i can actually move myself up top left as well so this little screen as i'm moving it around this is like what i'm calling my porthole effect <laughs> uh for want of a better term and that is what i'm going to be teaching you guys how to do for your obs uh sort of studio streams and lives and video presentations in today's video so if you like the sound of that please do Sorry about that, I cut myself off. So, so please do subscribe, stay notified, and uh, basically support my channel because all of these things do take quite a lot of effort to make them happen. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to talk about is that we actually have to jump into Photoshop as I just quickly showed you, and we're gonna start making the shapes of our cameras. Now, our shapes could be anything. I'm plain simple and old, so I would, I've would i done a circle for my live streams, but you could do a heart, a star, um, uh, you know make up your own polygon whatever you want to do it's up to you so we let's dive in in fact I'm just going to share my screen a different way today just to help myself out so here we are over in uh my photoshop in fact actually let me just one more second take this out of here and I am going to swap things around a little bit because I think it will help you there we go just to see my actual little porthole and what we're doing so this is a canvas which is 1920 by 1080 pixels so kind of the same uh, size and shape as basically the YouTube videos and so all I am going to do is I'm literally going to make something called a mask to start with so I'm going to literally select the uh, clips tool I'm going to make sure it's filled in with a color let's choose black because this needs to work really with a black or white effect and over here making sure everything is sorted out I am going to make a circle where's my cursor gone there we go so okay now you can use whatever tool or program that you want um, I'm just going to center it off just right now as well so let me just quickly cheat a little bit this is my little cheat way of bringing up the uh center location so i'm just literally have colored in the entire background so that i can quickly grab in my rulers there we go oh look that wasn't bad location that was not far off there we go so um i have just basically made a plain old circle we don't need this layer now so we can get rid of it so all i've got going on is a plain old black circle this is what will be called my image mask but as you can see on my little porthole i've also got a little blue border going on so we're going to create that as well so i'm literally going to duplicate this mask and i'm going to drag it below because i'm going to make this one just a tad bigger so i'm going to make it 10 percent bigger than it is currently and there we go and i'm making sure it's constrained it, there we go and i am now just going to make sure that the image parameters are selected so that I can color this in. So let's make this one pink, there we go. So now, if I turn off my image mask, the black circle, she says, there we go, we've got one pink circle and one black circle. The pink circle being just 10% bigger than the black circle. So we need to save these now as two different images. Now, before we do that, just make sure that you are aware that the whole of the canvas is actually transparent. There is nothing else going on, just these one objects um, on each of the layers, okay? Now, obviously, to save time, I have already done that, um, but basically, let's just do it anyway. So file, save as, no, I didn't want to do that at all. PNG is what I want to do. Sorry, my bad. It's got to be a transparent PNG because the transparency uh, PNGs um, is how the 
uh, shape is going to be picked up by the software. So I'm going to put that as a mask on my desktop and then I'm just going to turn the other one on and I'm just going to call this one border. So export PNG and this one is going, there's my mask up there on my desktop and this one is literally just going to be called border. Okay, so remember as well, wherever you put your assets and you store them, ready to link them all through to your OBS, they have to be in their long-term living location. This is just a demo, so they will be deleted. So I'm not fussed that they're on my desktop. But for you guys, if you go putting them on your desktop and then you create all your OBS assets and you then decide to move those assets to an actual folder called OBS or something like that, you will have to resync up and do this whole practice again because OBS will lose the path to where those assets live. So what we have going on here, we've got our shape mask and if we come over here we've now got our shape border so we can actually get rid of photoshop we don't need it anymore okay so there we go let's bring my camera back up on the screen so now that we have done that what we need to do is we need to go over to obs so i'm actually going to drag my obs window over to the left so that it's in full screen to help you guys see a little bit about what's going on so bear with me just a second here while i just rearrange my screen a little bit there we go. Oh, too much talking today. It's all been a it's been a bit of a go, go, go. Right. OK, so we need to share my left screen with you guys. OK, so OBS, what's going on? Right. Again, I can't, as if you've probably seen from my other previous videos, I can't actually change the broadcast right now by clicking on this porthole thumbnail. Uh, scene because the moment I do that all your visuals will disappear so what I'm going to do is we are going to essentially look at this but I, I have created a scene that I have now nested inside this actual broadcast what you are seeing right now this is giving me the ability to flick my little porthole image around the screen like this okay so um, we are basically going to create this again and what we've got going on here so if we look I have basically brought the thumbnail in the scene in twice. So I've made two instances of it and I've that's allowed me to put it in two different locations on my screen. And then I've just been able to coordinate my buttons to say show the left one or show the right one essentially is what we are going to do. So the first thing that we are gonna need to do is we are going to need to, to bring in our media source. So, uh, sorry, no, we're going to need to bring in our display because I'm using a digital SLR. So this isn't my camera. The, uh, this isn't a webcam. So it's not a normal video camera display. So yours will probably be your video capture. And then we've got my DSLR. So what we can see now going on on screen here is my uh, DSLR camera. This is exactly how it shows when I first bring it in. And what I have to do is I have to grab these red handles and I literally bring it down and reshape and cut out all the bits that you don't wanna see. So this is what I'm doing right now. So I've now got a my DSLR added so you've got the camera image but it's still a rectangle at the moment okay so the next thing that we are going to do is I'm going to create a folder so that I can see where all my assets live so that I don't uh, muddle them up with the other one so I'm just going to put this as a test uh, porthole so I know what to delete in the future and I'm just going to put it underneath my main webcam because then it's in the same sort of location as these ones and I know what's going on. And then I'm just gonna grab that camera and I'm gonna drag it and drop it in there. So here we have a folder with my, my camera, as you can see, going on right now. And as you can see, everything else is locked out and these two here are gray. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bring in no, we're gonna work on this first. What I'm going to do is I am going to click right click on the actual folder, not the digital SLR asset or, or the source, because if I actually uh, click and apply this filter to the source, all of my cameras will now have this new effect. And I don't want it to happen on all my cameras. I just want to have it, have it happen on the one that I'm working on. So I'm going to right click on the folder, go to filters, I'm going to go to the plus button down the bottom here and you will see here it will say image mask and blend. Don't worry if I've got different options to you. I've added a couple of OBS plugins which have given me some more controls and uh, features, things that you might not see, but you should at least have the image mask and blend. Give it a name if you want. 
and what you'll do is you will see this control panel pop up underneath the video. OK, so the one that you want to actually select is alpha mask, but it's alpha channel. OK, and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to browse to my desktop, wherever it's gone, and I'm going to find my mask image. OK, and there you go. You can see that I've uh, literally been turned into a circle. Now, um, what we can do in a minute, we can actually change the opacity of this to see how clear that I am or, and so forth. But basically, we can change the color. Um, give me a bit of a tint. Let's say I've got pink border. So let's give me a bit of a tint background. Look at that. Ooh, it's so scary. So let me just go back to white. Just bear me one second. OK, so this is just normal camera. And you can see that I've added myself a porthole image. Now I'm still looking down left at my other screen. So you have to excuse me. Right. I'm going to close this. So now my new camera has been added and we are a circle. But we still don't have that whole little pink background thing going on. So what we do need to do is um, we need to basically add another image. OK, and I'm just going to call it my test border. And on this test border, I am literally just going to go and browse back to my desktop and select my little pink background. And it's pretty pink, but I did it so that you guys can see it and so forth. So I'm going to move my um, image to the center of the screen. I'm going to basically put it underneath for the moment. And there we go. Oh, I've gone into the folder. That's why it's gone a bit wrong. I'll come out of the folder. There we go. And I want to go up here. Uh, it's putting it in the folder. I don't want it in the folder. Hang on. There we go. OK, so now I'm going to slide over the top and I've given myself a bit of a border. Now, the only way the thing that's going to stop me now succeeding with this demo live for you is that I cannot nest folders inside folders, which is ideally what I want to do. So at the moment, these two assets are working individually of each other. So the border, I can't, as you saw, if I put the border inside the actual porthole folder, it basically disappears and uh, the porthole, uh, the masking effect takes place on all the assets in that folder. So I'll just bring it back out. Um, now, what the reason that we've done this over here as a scene, it means that if you look down here, when I've brought the scene in and then I've put the scene into the folder, it means that this scene already has a folder and a the digital camera in it with the background outside. So I've only then got to name it and move it around, which is why I've been able to get the effect that I've got going on. So if you are copying this video, which I hope you are doing, OK, just in order to be able to work with it the way that I want you to work with it or the way that you're going to need to work with it, remember that you need to create the scene. Inside the scene, you put your camera. Um, Inside the scene, you've got a folder where you've put your camera and then you put your border and then add this scene. So nest the scenes into your main broadcast and then put that in another folder. And that's the only way that you can actually accomplish having the ability to move all your assets simultaneously. So as you can see, when I move my little porthole, the background border moves as well. OK, and that's the easiest way to do it. It sounds a little bit complicated, but if I was to literally dive over here now, um, you guys will probably lose the broadcast and it wouldn't work. Let me just try it. Oh, there we go. Can you see that? Oh, you can. OK, maybe this will work. So oh, but you can't see the actual folder. That's a shame. OK, so you can't actually see the sources, but you can see the effects. So basically, when you've got your scene set up, this is what your scene will look like. It will be doing just that object on its own. And then over here, once you've got it added, then you can add the folder. So that is pretty much how I've got this like little porthole image going on. I'm just going to turn this off for a second so that it doesn't confuse what's going on on my screen. And I'm just going to come back in the picture. There we go. OK, so uh, we've now added the camera. I've showed you how to add the filter mask. And there we go. And I've added it all to a folder. And that's how you get those effects. Now, the only other thing that you could do is whilst you are talking and you are live on your broadcast and you're demonstrating whatever you want to do, as you can see, let me just move my get rid of my OBS and bring it back over here. Um, when you are talking and you are live, sometimes your little porthole uh, 
there's my left hand screen there's nothing going on but my little porthole image but sometimes this might be sitting on top of things that are in the way and you want to show what's going on behind it which is why I've now carefully designed two locations I prefer myself showing in the bottom right hand corner um which is where you will normally see me for the like 99 percent of my videos where I've got my little porthole image taking place but sometimes it's necessary to move which is why I've now programmed my uh, little stream deck to have the two locations so all you need to do that's why you need to have the scene set up externally to the main broadcast so that you can add it in because then when you add it in it becomes like an asset or an instance and that means you can have multiple instances instead of actually editing the core source so I hope that doesn't confuse you um, for those who are like computer programmers and techies um, you should imagine get the instance sort of metaphor instantly <laughs> instantly uh, because of the fact that that's what computer program is all about um, but essentially uh, you've got two ways of editing something you can edit the true core source or you can make a, like a photocopy of it and edit the copies and that is essentially the key um, process to making this technique work is that you set up the porthole in a scene making it the core asset then you add that core asset to your main broadcast as many times as you want to put that copy or that instance into separate folders and then you can program left and right where you want them on the screen and that makes it job done so if you haven't already please do subscribe stay notified to my channel um it does take quite a lot of effort I have to say to produce these videos I do do it out of passion and love as you can probably tell I love what it is that I'm doing but unlike a lot of other YouTubers out there that will actually perfect and video and present and then edit down even if they're claiming to be live they might do actual lots of live streams whilst they're gaming or whilst they're doing other activities but to actually teach a tutorial whilst live is quite the challenge and obviously as you can see see it's quite early days into my channel and I do need all the support I can get so please do add any comments if you've got any questions I would love to see them in the comments below on my YouTube channel because I will go and answer them I'm on there daily checking out everything that is going on and and I do respond I don't just ignore you so please show me your love support and that kind of thing and I will see you on another video real soon thanks very much for watching